Hi, I'm Kevin, Technical Manager here at CCL Components. And today we have Ewan from Fronius come to show us your new inverter. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the Verto? Hi Kevin, thanks for having me. So yeah, my name's Ewan. I am one of the Technical Sales Advisor for Fronius. I'm based in Scotland. I cover Scotland and the north of England. So if um, for the installers needing support on site, maybe they're commissioning a system for the first time, they would like one of us to be on, on site to help them, I can, I can attend to that. Um, if you've got any repair or warranty issue that you might need looking at, I can, I can be on site to look at that as well. Okay. And as well, just design work. Is, so if you're looking at designing with the inver uh, Verto for the first time, and you need a little bit of support, then I'm here you to help. You can give them a hand. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly it. So yeah, as you've said, we brought the Verto along to show you today. So Verto is our new inverter coming in between the Simo 20 and the Toro 50. Right. So this comes in a 25, a 27, a 30, and a 33 kilowatt option. Great. And what would be the main applications for this inverter? So obviously starting at a 25 kilowatt inverter, we're looking at systems 25 kilowatts and upwards, which tends to fall into the small commercial rooftop right. range, but commercial rooftops, agriculture, um, perhaps data centers or other other businesses that are really focusing on European manufacturing uh -huh. and cybersecurity as well. Okay, fantastic. And um, Fronius are marketing this inverter as being particularly flexible. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. So the Verto, uh, it's the first Fronius inverter that is coming with four MPPT trackers. So that gives you good flexibility for shading, for, for string uh, design. Right. It helps it for the designer and the in installer. But alongside that, we've also got a very wide voltage input range onto those individual strings. So we're 150 volts up to 870 volts inputs on the string. So again, that means you can have very short strings of panels, very long strings of panels, which really makes it a flexible system for, yeah, for, for all different all sorts of yeah, installations. All different installations. Absolutely. So we've been getting questions from our customers asking if this is the replacement for the Eco. So this is not the replacement for the Eco. The Eco is going to remain in the in the portfolio. So you'll have both the Verto and the Eco. Right, okay. So what would be the main differences between the Eco and the Verto then? Yeah, so the the Eco, uh, the Eco only has one MPPT tracker and it's got no DC, DC booster. So when you're designing and installing with the Eco, you have to be very careful of the string lengths that you're putting into it. You might find that you can only do maybe 16 or 17 panels and that's the kind of voltage window that the inverter will function in. Whereas with the Verto, you've got those four MPPT trackers and four DC to DC boosters, so you can have that much wider input range. The, the Eco is still very, uh, it's a cost optimized right. solution. So if you're able to design the array to match the inverter, then it's, a, it's still a good choice, but for flexibility, it's the vertical. This is the one to go, to go for. <laughs> and it being so flexible, um, does that mean it's gonna be a good choice for repowering projects? Yeah, we think it's going to be a really great choice for, for repowering. So, yeah, systems 12, 10, 12 years ago, uh, kind of towards the end of the feed-in tariff where we had that kind of 50 kilowatt limit, there's a lot of those inverters out there that are now coming to the end of their life, the end of their warranty periods. And this, we think, will do a great job of slotting in uh, as a replacement device for there. Because you've got that wide voltage input, you've got four trackers, uh, and the kind of very similar AC output side, mm -hmm. it should mean that you don't need to change much on the AC side, Great. and you don't need to do any restringing or, or lifting of panels up on the roof. Should be a, a really easy swap for people looking to repower all their systems. Fantastic. So is there an easy way to check for the right solution? Yeah, great question. So we have a repowering tool um, on the Fronius website. So you can take your old inverters information, so um, the manufacturer and, and the model, pop that into the repowering tool, and it will tell you what the suitable Fronius solution is. So whether that's the Verto or, or a Toro or, or whatever it may be, gives you a nice breakdown of the, the inputs that you would have had on the old inverter right. and the options available on the new inverter. Brilliant. Um, another bit of feedback we get from our customers is that they're very happy with Fronius's um, service and supports. 
Why do you think that is? <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear some positive <laughs> feedback on us. Um, what we tend to find is because we've got a UK-based support team, mm -hmm. so we've got guys on the phones and on the emails in Milton Keynes, and we've got guys on the ground, Right. it allows the installer to actually easily talk to someone. So if they're on site and they have a problem, they can pick up the phone and they can speak directly to one of the, one of the support team. Uh, alongside that, if you do have a problem and it results that you need to replace an inverter, or replace a component on an inverter, we hold stock of that in Milton Keynes. So we can, most days, get it out to you same day or next day, so you'll get it a day or two later. Um, so and, minimal downtime. Yeah, exactly, Minim, minimal downtime. And the great thing is, if you've spoken to the guys in the office, they've agreed to do a replacement for you, that inverter gets shipped to you before shipping the old one back. Oh, so you simply take the new one out the box, put the old one in the box, and that's it. All no done. downtime, or as, as minimal downtime as possible. <laughs> as it can be, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Shall I show you inside and we can have a look at the connection areas? Yeah, that would be great. Great, so it's easy to open up the, the device, so 180 degree locking screws, half a turn. And that makes it enough. really easy for access, doesn't it? Really easy, no chance of uh, over-torquing any of the screws causing damage. So, one more. So, that's a place down here. So, you'll see over on the right-hand side we have the AC connection area. Dead straight forward, L123, neutral on earth. We can do this as both a four-wire uh, or a five-wire connection depending on the, the grid supply. Alongside that, we've got the integrated surge protection. So built in from the factory, don't need to worry about that, um, with replaceable cartridges. So if you do have an AC surge, easy to replace on Straight site. Straight swap. Exactly. Yeah. Over on the left-hand side here, we've got the DC connection area. Underneath, you'll see we've got um, Genuine Stavely MC4s. So for a really secure, easy DC connection. And we've got our DC surge protection up here as well. Again, replaceable in the field should Great. you have a DC surge. Uh, in the middle, we've got a, a DIN rail, piece of DIN rail here. So if you needed to connect any third party components, um, any monitoring systems like that, that you wanted to put in, there's a space for them in here. And then up in the top in the middle, we've got our pilot board, our communication card. So that's, that's the same communication card that is used in the Gen 24 right. series of devices, as well as the Toro. So if you've commissioned either of those devices before, they It'll should be, be familiar. Exactly, yeah. it should be a walk in the park. So are there any other built-in safety features in the uh, Verto? Yeah, so there's a couple of features that we can um, talk about. So. In the Verto, we've now got Arc Guard, which is our AFCI, our Arc Fault Current oh, okay. Interrupter. Yep. So uh, in the event of uh, a series uh, arc in the panels, uh, normally that's in an MC4, a badly connected MC4, or a, ca a loose cable on, on the roof, the inverter should pick up that fault uh, and, and go into a, an error mode so to protect the, the panels on the roof. Alongside that, we've also got this Tiny little orange plug here with the wee loop of cable in it, you might, might be able to see. This is our WSD wired shutdown device. So what we can do with that is we can simply loop that out into a fire alarm panel or a fire, fireman switch. So in the event of a, an external issue, somebody hits the, the switch, it puts all the inverters into standby. So again, just a nice, easy safety feature which the installer can add without much, much effort. Thanks for the detailed overview of the Verto today, Ewan. It's been really helpful. And hopefully it's been helpful for anyone who's watching as well. If you do have any questions, please contact the CCL team or leave a question in the comments below. Thanks and see you next time.